Okay, so the first thing um, we want to find out from you, Trish, is um, so you have Savvy Web Woman, and you, which is a WordPress business you run, and we want to find out what kind of work you do. Like, do you do everything, marketing, SEO, content entry, design, building the website, or do you do certain things for the client and not other things? Um, I actually do certain things, um, but it is kind of, I like to do like an overall this is what a good solution is for a client um whether i do the whole thing whether i design it develop it launch it and maintain it or i help with figuring out like the ba uh, basic seo for on-site seo um i do outsource um more seo for ongoing SEO, but um, I do have contacts for like marketing strategy and for graphic design, anything that's more than just basic, then I will outsource that. Okay, um, so I wanna immediately follow up and ask, how do you manage your relationships with those contacts you bring onto a project are they subcontractors for you are you working closely together or do they talk to the client or they, do they deliver things to you they talk to the client i introduce them and then the client will engage engage them separately and then i will work work with that person i have um some network contacts that i i usually recommend to the client to work with that i've worked with before so that that's usually how I do it. Um, the clients sites that I work on tend not to be way too involved. They're like, usually they've already started a website of their own. It's either DIY or they've had it for a couple of years and they're just ready for uh, the next step to look, to look a bit more professional, reflect their business. Okay. business better it's just taking too much of their time so it's like i have a, an overall sense of what they need what they need if i'm able to provide it then i go ahead and do that so in a way you have an advantage because your clients are coming to you never having had a website before they're already kind of familiar with what can go wrong and what's hard which that, right that's who i market to because that is who I've figured out my ideal client is, is one who at least knows what their business actually is. Um, because when I first talk to a client, that's the first thing I wanna know is what is your business? Who do you serve? And what is your, um, your value that you bring, your uh, unique, value proposition for for the clients um okay so related to that you specifically work with clients who are women entrepreneurs right that's who i market to not who i specifically work with okay okay how did you decide on that on, on that targeted marketing set that i really decided i actually took a class a few years ago just because I was a general marketing to everybody, I would take everybody. And then going through that class, we really talked about um, who is your ideal client? Who do you really like to work with? Who, who do you really respond and you feel like you can um, really bring somebody forward um, in their own business. And I've really found that women entrepreneurs, um, usually, usually in the small business stage, I really love working with them because I like to show them the possibilities of things that they may not be aware of or think that would pertain to their own business and be able to implement that for them. That really just lights me up. So when I found, found that out, that's actually when I 
when I, you know, it just, I went through a whole bunch of words, you know, just to see what really spoke to me. And savvy really spoke to me because it, I can grab from other things, you know, I, I'll look at this, I'll research that, you know, just really figuring out how, how things work together because that is how my mind works. Mm -hmm. I, I really like seeing the big picture and I like explaining and really having my clients understand how the big picture works and that it is accessible to them. They can understand it. I'm not just their geek in a box that actually I can really talk to them and they can, they can understand and actually my my favorite clients are the ones that I've worked with and and I keep continue working with and then they come back to me and say I read this on an article or something is this something that I can do and that that just I I get chills because I know that they've come far enough that they are confident enough to be able to think, oh, I can do this on my website. So do you have a long-term relationship with some of your clients? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I do. I've actually been doing this for almost four years now. Okay. And my longest client is about three and a half years. So I, I, I like to have long-term relationships with my, with my clients. Mm -hmm. um, are your clients local? Are you meeting with people face to face, or were you before? You know, we all had to stay home. I was before. Um, I've actually even had one client that initially was face to face, and then she moved out of state. And so we've continued our relationship, even even now it's just totally remote. But it. It's, I haven't found that it changing to Zoom to talk to my clients, it, it's actually been quite seamless. You know, little hiccups along the way, but now I just talk to everybody remote mostly. Yeah, yeah, my clients are all remote and especially in the last year, everybody's gotten so used to it that it's, it's gotten very smooth. Um, okay, how do, you, how do you find new customers? Um, this kind of gets back to your marketing. How are you, how are you meeting them? Um, right now I have gotten most of my clients through one referrals or through networking groups. Um, I, I show up and I just give, I, I give um, lots of information. I'm very open with sharing information. Um, anybody wants to talk afterwards, I will talk to them and I've, I have found that that has been working for me mostly. Um, I want, and I'm working on myself, getting more into um, marketing myself online, getting better at that, um, being more consistent on social media, you know, try, just trying to get more information out there to establish my own reputation. It's just something I work on with myself all the time. I think, um, I mean, with this kind of success in four years, you're doing something right. That's that's pretty quick. Um, when you say networking groups, are they industry specific or are they entrepreneurial? Uh, entrepreneurial, groups? I found works best um, because of who my niche is, is women who have been in business, you know, at, at least two plus years or even more so they've kind of gotten over that initial hump. And mm -hmm. then um, I, I network to find people, people that are within um, what my target market is. Okay. Um, so uh, you talked about how you present yourself on social media. What kind of social media are you doing for your business? What are your channels? Right now, not enough. Very, very sporadic. 
Um, I do belong to a couple of Facebook groups that somebody else runs, not myself, but I have like a regular tip or a regular post that I do, a weekly post that is just, you know, you've just a little website tip, a WordPress tip, um, you know, ju just a little something to have uh, content out there and just to be regularly posting and regularly um, getting my name out there. Is it on your um, a blog post on your website and then shared socially? Right now, no, it's just been post right directly. This is something I'm working on, Claire. <laughs> something we um, all need to work on for our businesses, I think. It's, uh, you know, it's the sort of thing that you hear people always recommending and then you try to actually sit down and do a post every week is kind of a big commitment. So hey, I, I will tell you, even doing my own website, I really didn't even launch my own website fully until about a year ago. Before that, it's hard. It, I don't know about anyone else, but I found and find it so much harder to work on my own website than to work on clients. I think it's work, kind of a- Working on clients is so easy. I can see what needs to be done and motivated to do it. I look at my own and go, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. don't want to look at it. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I think you would get a lot of agreement in this group. <laughs> it's, it's not as much fun as when you're getting paid to do someone else's site. Mm -mm. Um, do you have a, a do you have um, a newsletter that you send out? Do you have people subscribe? I have three people on my newsletter list, and I do send something out. So please, please sign sign up for my newsletter. That's uh, that is another thing that I do not do. That would again require continuing work. <laughs> okay, um, let's take a break for questions. Does anybody have any questions about um, getting customers, SEO, or marketing your own business, or uh, getting started in that kind of uh, subject? Okay, everybody agrees with you. All right. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, here's one. Nancy has one. What challenges have you run across that you learned the most from? Um, do you mean like business challenges or uh, technical? Just anything, Nancy? Uh, yeah, just, you know, whatever sticks out in your mind, you know, the one that kept you up most of the most during the night. <laughs> and you're like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Letting a client go. Yeah. I think I learned more from that because I kept putting it off. I kept putting it off. And I, I, once I finally did it with encouragement from um, some peer entrepreneurs, I've just, I've kind of got like this virtual, I've, I've created a virtual team, you know, of like-minded entrepreneurs that I can bounce ideas off of or get a little bit of emotional support and they encouraged me I think you need to do that and so when I finally did it was like a, a weight was totally lifted off of me I I felt like I I could do so much more um, I was more excited about my business it was just realizing what I actually had to do. And it was a tough, tough decision, but I'm, I think next time I will do it sooner. I'll have those boundaries because setting boundaries, I think is what caused that problem. Um, Connor asks what your best SEO tips are for promoting your business. Uh, it, it, or for SEO, others. My best SEO tip is it is a continual process. It is not a one and done. You need to keep looking to see how, how your keywords are performing. 
changing up your keywords, making sure that everything is uh, fresh. If it's your copy to update, um, content, making sure you have you have new content on your site, which Google Google likes. So that's my best SEO tip. Do you um, do that for your clients or do you advise them and then they take care of it themselves? I advise them to do that. Um, Stacy has a good question, but I think we're gonna get into that later, Stacy. That's like in my part three questions about project structures. Okay, awesome. my next question is about, I'm gonna copy paste the URL on your website, which I think is, uh, great page on your website where you specifically lay out your maintenance plans and the monthly mm -hmm. costs and what you do. And I would love to hear about how you, how this works for you, how you decide, first off, how you decided on, on this approach, which seems very logical, but I think a lot of people, um, I mean, $99 a month is a lot more than I think a lot of people ask at our level for, for you know, at the small business level for this sort of service. So I want to know how it's working for you. And if it's, if the amount of time you have to invest in it makes it worth, worth it for you. Um, I, I'm actually don't remember where I got that idea from, I, from somebody in, in a group or something that they, they were doing that and I had had a couple of customers that basically I, I could tell they needed ongoing support that when they got into WordPress that it was much more than they expected it to be and knew that they needed needed something going and for my own business having some recurring revenue is a um, some st financial stability helps knowing that that, that uh, income is coming in helps me budget. So I, I started with that with, with a, I think that's actually pretty standard. Maybe even it's getting a little bit low. I, I know I've heard like 125 a month. Um, and just seeing what other people were doing for uh, what they were providing. And I, I settled on um, the plugin updates, backups. I use Manage WP okay. to manage it. Um, so, it's, so it automatically does backups. I pay for the premium services and I find it very reasonable. And I have actually within the last six months hired somebody, a virtual assistant to do the updates for on all of my paying clients twice a month. Uh -huh. So it's somebody who's not technical, but can go in on a website, press buttons. And if she, has um, an error or problems, she will just call me or ping me online. And then I can take care of any technical issues. But I have really found that it's a load off my mind having somebody else do it for me and to cr create uh, the monthly reports because Man Manage WP has some standard reports, monthly reports for performance, security updates, any plugin updates, WordPress updates. And so I, I have heard do that and I find that's really worth it. All right, so Manage WP takes care of a lot of that for you. What about the search engine stuff? Are you actually going into analytics every month and, and checking. Um, how are you keeping track of the performance for your client sites? Not the performance, I mean, you know, the search engine performance specifically. Um, Manage WP has, has like a standard Google Analytics in their, their regular monthly report. Um, other, 
otherwise I have a couple of clients that have, I've set up an automatic um, report in Google Analytics that just mails it directly to them. So if they want, want to go over something, I can, otherwise I offer uh, twice a year, I'll contact my clients, say, let's get together, let's have a call, see how you're doing, see if you have any plans, just to keep contact with my customers. Um, are there any other tools you're using in your monthly maintenance? What about for your email support tickets? Um, I, I'm not right now. I've tried ones, but I just found that they it was just too cumbersome. So right now I just keep track of them in Airtable. But you could do it in a spreadsheet, whatever works for you. Yeah, or just in an email with folders or tags too, I guess. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever works for you, you can do it pretty simply even without, without um, services there are some ticket management zoho i think has one i've used that one i've tried that one but it was just trying to get the clients educated and it was just easier right now for me to use email and i track the tickets myself um, in my maintenance plan i allow two hours of um, update work for them simple update work and of course if it's flexible if if they've got something that's like two hours and 10 minutes, that's fine. You is, know, just really keep keeping a uh, client relationship there. So um, is two hours would be a lot of time to spend on the client per month. Do you, do you find that over the months it evens out? Is it about an hour a month, do you think? Um, I think it's less than that, actually. I think it's probably about 45 minutes averaged out between the clients minus what I pay pay the uh, virtual assistant to help me too. Um, so it sounds like this maintenance plan works pretty well for you. Um, it does work really well for me. Yeah. And, and I, um, I get what you're saying about it being like a constant because it can be sort of a feast and famine with new projects. Um, that you know you're way too busy, or you just finished the project, and there's nothing. Whereas a monthly maintenance is always there. Mm -hmm. Plus, I have you know I'll have regular um, contact with my customer. I I I send them my monthly newsletter. They have they have their own newsletter, and you know they they keep seeing me in their uh, in their inbox, so that when they when they're ready to make updates because the life of a website's what about two and a half, three years, then they're ready for a new one. And then, you know, I'm the person that helps, helps them with their website and they're comfortable with me and they, they know, know that I can help them with that. Yeah, that's great. Um, Okay, I want to talk about your whole process of a, a, um, a project building website, but Connor has a question. Connor says he's agnostic on Google Analytics. Does it really help small businesses? Actually, what kind of metrics do you use? I, the metrics that I like to look at is where the traffic is coming from. Um, depending on the business, what the demographics are. Um, sometimes it's if the um, clients are mobile or their desktop, that can make a, a difference on what I will um, concentrate, concentrate their, their site with, especially mobile, it's speed, images, quick to load, desktop, maybe not spend so much time on it. But, but looking at that, even for a small business, it, it does make a difference. You can you can glean some things. Now, I, 
with one client, I was working with her and she did not realize that Facebook ads were also being posted to Instagram. And looking at the Google Analytics is when we found out that she was actually getting more people clicking on her Instagram ads than Facebook and she didn't even know that. And so then she could, she actually switched her marketing from focusing on Facebook to focusing on Instagram. So it, it actually made, made a lot of difference for her. She doubled her, doubled her sales after mm -hmm. doing that. Um, are these clients, um, are they online uh, businesses or are these like, um, do they have like uh, brick and mortar locations that people, are the websites are bringing people to? Both. Um, I've, I've worked with both. So you're working with some e-commerce on websites? Right now, no. Right now I don't have any e-commerce any e clients, but I would like to. I would like more experience with e-commerce. What are the, um, what sort of, do you mind saying what sort of business your, some of your customers are in? Um, I have, I've worked with um, kids entertainment company. I've worked with um, uh, software. A, a software company. I've worked with um, uh, home organizing clients. I have a book publisher. I, I'm just trying to think of think of off the top of my head, but so so sort of. I mean, kind of all over really the place. Really varied right now. Mm hmm. I, I'm hoping that as my company grows, that I could niche down even further, but. What's your um, ideas for, for uh, you know, kind of I, I think I'm just kind of open to it right now, just to see what happens. I have a business analytics um, company that I'm working with right now. And that's, that's pretty exciting. Oh, cool. Okay, if, um, let me see, I want to talk about uh, sort of the kind of the structure of one of your website build projects of like of how um, from acquiring the customer through to launch and starting with this URL, which is your 15 minute consultation page. Mm -hmm. um, do you get, is that how people contact you? How do people contact you mostly? Mostly it will come, come through that or I, I will direct direct them there to schedule a consultation with me. And it's what I really want to find out is what are their goals? What are what are they wanting? Why are they wanting um, to update their website right now? What are what do they like about their website? What they what they don't and where they they envision uh, their online presence to be. What is your um, what's your next step after that call? What do you what um, what actions do you leave the potential customer with? Depending on the complexity of it, I can either just give them a quote right there and send send them a proposal. Um, I use ooh. I'm trying to think of fresh proposals that I have. Um, uh, proposal templates that I can just fill in and, and send it to them right away. Um, other, otherwise, if it's more complex, then we uh, can set up a, a design relationship where it's basically I will create a solution for them and then price it out after that, if it's how complex it can be. Um, what do you mean by create a solution? Is that bringing in your um, it, partner who's a designer? 
sometimes it is and sometimes it is it is creating um, the architecture of how it is how the user um, the customer journey is going to flow through how their website works um, sometimes it's it's just the site structure creating um, creating that the site map for it um, sometimes they have to integrate with multiple multiple um, sources if they're they're doing a newsletter and they have some other back end that they want to do if they're doing um, not necessarily e-commerce but they they have like PayPal or or different forms um, it can be a bit more complex and they actually need a solution um, not just they have a, a set of specs that they want um, me to build for them. Um, so uh, Pat asked if your partners pay you a referral fee. So at the point where you're um, bringing in the designer and you, I think you said a marketing person also? Mm -hmm. I've, I also work with a marketing strategy person. And actually a, a lot of times I will say before you talk to me, you actually need to talk to um, talk to them because in the design process, my philosophy is that the website's like the last thing. You need to know what your, um, what your vision for your company, what your mission is, who your client, who your customer is, who your target segments are before actually even starting to think about what your website needs to look like or what you actually actually want to get out of your website. And the first thing I, I it's like the last thing I want, want to talk to a client about is what are your colors, what the fonts are. Before that, you really need to have a good sense of what you want your website, what you want people that are going to your website, what you want them to do. What is your goal? Do you want them to sign up for your newsletter? Do you want them to make an appointment with you? Do you want them to buy something? All, all of those questions need, need to be answered before we even start talking about a design. That makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, William's question is relevant at this point. Can you tell us a little about how you price your site builds? Are you structuring it on an hourly basis, per page basis? When you send them that quote or esti initial estimate, how are you mapping that out? Um, I have it kind of like um, an estimate of hours. I will give them a, a range, a price range. I... I have my own um, estimates of how long something will take or a certain kind of project will take. And then what I'll give to the customer is, this is an estimate, you know, a high and a low of probably what it will cost for them. Um, depending on the project, if it's, if it's just a, a simpler project, if it's like a brochure, you know, four or five pages, I, I do have a static amount that it that I do price price that at. And um, so the marketing strategy and the designer are separate and your clients would go talk to them separately, pay them separately. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of kickback or bonus or discount that you guys pass around? No, we don't right now. I don't I don't have that with um, relationships set up with anyone. We're just um, referring business to each other. Right, right. It's, it's very useful to have that kind yeah. of person. Can reciprocal. Yeah. Um, so what, so you, you have the 15 minute call, you mm -hmm. send over a proposal, at which point you've basically figured out the kind of the overall structure of the website and what you're gonna charge or the overall structure of the project, what you're gonna do for them. Mm -hmm. and what you're going to charge. Um, 
what is the what kind of contract do you have who is signing what at what point in this process um i have an a excuse me a standard contract that protects um my my own business and that it's basically a statement of work of what i will be doing for the client and they they sign that i sign that um where it states what the fee is and what is actually what the work is that the scope of the work for the project is going to be um also i have a a scope change clause in there that if anything comes up or if they have any changes scope of work then i have a clause in my con contract with them that i i will renegotiate on how much more that would cost for them does that contract also include a timeline and launch date with deadlines for like the client to get their content to you things like that um i don't but i do know other people have have that in there um usually my my contract will say it's um that i will deliver on or around a certain certain date in the future if that's something that the customer is is looking towards otherwise i i base it based on um my own calendar my own my own timeline schedule and if it's a rush job yes i do charge extra um, does anyone have any other questions about this stage of the project, getting things started and, and pricing? I think there's a few of us, a, a few enough of us that you could just unmute and ask it, I think. Good. Okay, because the next part um, is going to go back to one of Stacy's questions, which mm -hmm. is, so you're building the site. Do you have a standard way to keep clients informed with the progress on the projects? Do you have weekly meetings? Do you have um, demos or some sort of status update? And does it is it the same for everyone or does it vary from client to client? It does vary from client to client depending on the client need. Um, I do like to send out a weekly email saying, uh, this is what has happened this week. Usually it's it gets sent out on Fridays, and then this is what is scheduled for the for the following week. So they at least get a a touch from me, whether it's a meeting or it's just an email that we keep in communication that way. Um, some clients like to open up a Slack channel and invite me to a Slack channel. I'm I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. It really depends on, on your communication style, but yeah. I do I do want to have that open communication back and forth during the project. Um, when it's time for content entry, when the site's been built up enough for that, do you do the content entry or do you have your clients um, create the content for the site? Depends. Um, it really depends what? on what the, pro the project is. Um, I have I have launched sites that um, do not have their content in, and the the uh, client has been okay with it because they know that they they still have to put that in. Um, but typically, typically it it's it's a negotiation, and I know it's it's a struggle to get all the information and some, um, I know some web designers want all of that information even before they'll, they'll start designing. So it really is, I find it, it depends on the client. I don't have a hard and fast rule. Yeah, they're, they're usually pretty slow about getting their content together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. It's a constant struggle. <laughs> um, oh, wait, question. Uh, Williams, just 
just asking the same thing during the site build process or after, do you find it hard to obtain client or content from clients when necessary? How do you deal with it when you're having a tough time getting that content? If I'm having a tough time dealing with it, I will, I will, t I will um, contact the customer and basically it's uh, the project will, will end at, on a certain date. I will disengage from the project um, and the, the rest of, of the um, payment will be due because I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I, you know, I'll do everything, but it's like, you still have all of that content, but as far as I'm concerned, your, your website is launched. Oh, um, I like that. Uh, do they ever come back to you and ask you to restart after a certain point? Usually it's, um, I have not found that. I've not really had a big problem with it yet. If it's any delay, it's like a week or two, but I've not had anybody that's been more than that. And I've, I've heard of horror stories. I don't know how anybody else has dealt with that. Uh, not really well. I usually just push back the schedule, you know, just have, you know, sort of a deadlines for when content is ready. And then it's understood that if your content isn't ready, then we're pushing launch back until by whatever time until it is ready. Mm -hmm. um, so do you address that in your contract that if they don't do their end of the content that you're going to just, you're just done and they'll have to pay you anyway? Mm-hmm. Yep, I do. I think Nancy had a question. Well, I was just going to say, I, I am a writer, a content writer. So sometimes mm -hmm. you could refer um, somebody to, you know, like give them the option of having someone write their content for them. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then and I'm a, a SEO specialist, so I would optimize it. And then also, like I use a template where I put in what the title tags should be for that page and the meta description and the, you know, all tag on an image if it's relevant and that kind of thing. So that can also be helpful. You know, sometimes that, that'll force them to, you know, move. Like, well, I can hire someone, you know, and you can bring it up again. That's what I find is clients at the same time say, I got a guy who's like, I was going to help optimize his LinkedIn profile. He's like, well, I, I can do that myself. I'm like, okay, okay. You know, well then, you know, a month goes by and he hasn't done it. And, you know, and, <laughs> you know, I said, you know, I, I can do that for you. And it's a little bit more scope, but, you know, it's not much. It was like a couple hundred, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, just go ahead and do that. You know, so a lot of times they'll, they'll be okay with that. Or, you know, like I'll interview them and write the content and then all they have to do is edit it, which is a lot easier to push against something that already exists. So I just thought I'd mention that. That's a good point. It's a really good point, Nancy. I think that kind of pushes the issue too. And they're, they're realizing they actually don't have the, the time or the skills to be able to do that. And to actually get their project out, out of the door. That's a really good, really good um, idea, Nancy. Um, oh, Sally says she adds a restart fee. I knew there was someone who did that. I was trying to remember That's who it was. Sally has a restart fee, yeah. Um, Sally, how, um, so Sally, can you talk about that a little bit? Like what, what's your criteria for calling a halt to a project? And then how long have you waited to start it again? Um, and what's your restart fee? Um, I've done the offering to hire someone to do the content. So I already do that. And I've used the magic email. You guys know about the magic email? No, what's that? It seems like you've given up on this project. Would you like to stop? <laughs> or, you know, something like that. This doesn't appear to be a priority right now. Should we put it on hold? And if they come up and say, no, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, great. Let's mm -hmm. keep going. But you know, if it, if we keep doing that and I'll say, you know what, we are now a month or whatever past the launch date and 
if you need to pause that project, that's fine, but understand. And of course there's, there is this uh, restart fee and I will have to just put you in the queue wherever I can fit you in at that time when you're ready to restart. Or, you know, if they say, you, you know, I, I really don't have time for this project, I'll have to say, well, um, then you are gonna have to pay me as though it's completed because I have in fact done everything mm -hmm. that, that we contracted to do. And it, it says in my contract that I'm, I'm not beholden to them to, um, because they don't have content. Um, the the um, format I use is actually one from Carrie Dills. I don't know if you've seen that on her website. Um, and, and it's a variation of uh, Killer Contract, I think. But it, it has language in it right there for, you know, if, if I've done everything I was contracted to do and the project is not ready because your content's not ready, that's not my fault. <laughs> I mean, it says it nicer than that, but that's basically yeah, what basically it is. basically what, what mine says, but I have not, yeah. I've not, um put in a restart fee that's interesting yeah it's um I, I, you know i just say it's only fair because i have put other projects on hold and turned off other work turned down other work because i was holding a spot for you mm -hmm. so you know and if they come back six months later there's technically a lot that may have to be done or redone you know especially if they've had um uh, you know a um, employee changes or changeovers of ownership or, you know, a hundred things that can happen in six months in a business. So I'm sorry, my earpiece is hitting my earring. That's annoying. Mm -hmm. um, have you had so. people come back to you? Like, was this a time span? Yeah. And, and also, can I know what, what is the fee? Like, are we talking six months and you charge them $500? Like what, what, how? It, it's usually like $1,500 to restart. You know, considering my my baseline generally for a uh, website is a is between four and five thousand dollars. You know, and that's for like a seven page site, and and um, you know, I include a lot of stuff in that. But yeah, um, yeah, it's usually like fifteen hundred dollars, and and so they just have to decide if that's worth it or not, or maybe they're just done with the project, or you know. Mm -hmm. hundred things. I'm, I'm project managing for a friend of mine who, um, we, we just had, we just have been through this. Um, the client just got busy and kept saying that she would supply the content. She would supply the content and she never did. And so we said, do you want us to find a content writer? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you do that? And so we've got quotes and got the content writer. And now she has what the writer uh, wrote in her hands and she's massaging it around to make her make it the way she wants it so that was actually a big help and now we're, we're having we're kind of insisted on having month or weekly meetings to get progress and and uh, keep this keep the project going because the other thing is if you've hired uh, other contractors like designers or writers or other developers mm -hmm. and all that you know you're paying them out of what the client is paying you and so if the project stalls that means your whole cash flow is stalled so it, it, it's okay to, to be a little hard on that if you have to. I mean, you know, don't be nasty, but, you know, you know be, be firm. You, you, have, you have to be a good steward of your business just the same as they do theirs. So that's all I got. That's excellent <laughs> advice, I think. Okay. I want to ask about um, when you're actually building the site, do you have, like, how standardized are you? Do you have a particular theme or page builder that you always use so you know the capabilities and you can put a site together pretty quickly? I use Divi. I've been using Divi in the last, at least the last year, year and a half. Um, I do I do like it. I know what it, its capabilities are, learning, all, learning new stuff all the time. So... That's what I typically do, and and I've taught clients how to use it too, and they they've been happy. Do you have any suggested resources for learning, Debbie? Um, I use. Let's see, I I do use their own blog a lot. They have a lot of really good information. Um, oh gosh, there's a couple other 
resources I use. Let's see, it was Mark Hendrickson or something like that. Has a lot of good information and I would, I'll post in the Slack group um, a couple of resources that I use. You know, good old Google, <laughs> it's, it's my friend. This is all. Um, what about plugins? Do you have any go-to plugins you put on every site? Um, I use a few plugins that I, I like to use. I, I use RP, um, WP Rocket. I use, um, ooh, um, trying to think of some other ones that I you usually use. Um, I use, um, uh, forms, no, uh, gravity forms. Oh yeah, that's a great plugin. I use gravity forms and I have been using um, a workflow with, with them too and it actually has been working really well. Um, uh, can't come up with the names right now. All right, it's late in the day. A gravity forms workflow? It, I can do a lot more Work for Uncanny Automator. That's what it is. Check it out. And I've been using it with Gravity Forms and, and with MemberPress, a MemberPress site that I've got, and with MailChimp. And it's like IFTTT for WordPress. And I actually, I, I love it. You can do a lot of automation in that. Okay, automator. Totally am familiar with that. Okay, so uh, Gravity Forms, developers licenses a couple hundred dollars, right? Um, mm -hmm. So do you own the license and then you um, just have that a developer license that you share with your customers as part of the as bonus part of their maintenance? Yeah, and if they, in my maintenance contract, if they decide to discontinue the maintenance contract with me, they have to purchase those plugins, uh, subscriptions on their own. Um, a year ago, I had one, one client who was considering um, stopping her maintenance plan for cost reasons and because of COVID. And I sent her a list of, okay, this is what you would need to purchase and pay for. And she's, she said, no, I'll keep my maintenance plan. Yeah, stuff that's up. So, so if they sign up for your maintenance, they get to use your licenses for the plugins. Yep. It's a, it's a huge bonus. Um, what percentage of your uh, clients would you say after they build a site would you stay on as maintenance customers? I would say about 75% of them, 75, 80% of them. A lot, a lot of them do because of the, I think because of the market that I like, I go with, I go with one people that are needing um, something beyond what they've already done or have been comfortable with. They need help there. They don't, um, want to get into WordPress or they've tried to get into WordPress and it was much more than their technical abilities were. So uh, most of them, they like having somebody that they can call even for a question. You know, just having the lifeline there I, is worth the $99 a month for a lot of people. Um, let me see. So uh, we've talked about how you're building the site, what you're using to build the site. Um, do you have any restrictions on what hosts your clients use? Do you have particular hosts? Can they just choose their own host? Do you have someone they, you won't work with? Um, no. I have preferred ones that I, I have liked working with working with, but no, I, I don't, I don't offer hosting. I recommend, um, I've recommended hosts that 
that I've had good experience with, but no, I don't require it. A certain host, um, I, I do look at what the um, capacity is. And if, if they're having problems, then I would recommend that they, they need to look at getting a, a different host. Who do you recommend for hosting? Right now, let's see, this last one I had, I recommended a couple of them. I recommended Flywheel or WP Engine, and they went with WP Engine, and they've been really happy with them. Yeah, I, that's, those are both very reputable hosts. Yep. Mm -hmm. They were having a lot of issues with speed. They were on DreamHost. Yeah, and having a lot of issues. Do you, um, how do you manage the hosting contract? Do you have them sign up and pay and then add you as a user? So they're yep. paying their bills. Yep. They provide their own hosting and just give me access to it. Um, a lot of the hosting companies now have, have set up so that you can give agencies access so that you don't have to, that clients don't have to give you their own passwords or access to it you can um, designate an agency partner to to work with and they've got and then we have all the information and everything that we can we can get to that we need to yeah yeah it's a lot happy a lot easier Flywheel in particular, I think, is smart about that. The way you just have your own account and then you're just matched with whatever customer is on there. It's just one login for you and they show up in your dashboard. Smart. Um, what about domains? Did your customers register their own domains and manage mm -hmm. it or are you helping them yep. and at what level? Um, usually when they come to me, they already have their own domains. So I will... I will help um, uh, configure it. And like even Google domains, you can have an admin, add an admin to maintain um, a, a domain that a customer owns. I know that they do that now. I've, I just did one. But they, they own it, they own their website, they, they have, their own hosting. I I like to do that because if anything happened to me or my company, then they still have ownership access, and that there's no question about it. I I've um, been contacted. I know it was somebody about six months ago that their website person just kind of disappeared and they didn't have access. They didn't own the hosting. So it was, it was, I felt bad for them, but there was, wasn't a lot that I could do to help them. They didn't have access to their own domain. It's awful. So I, I just, I just don't even want to put my clients in that kind of a situation. Yeah. Also, it's much less hassle if, if they do their own billing. And uh, Prasad says that's great practice. I agree. <laughs> yeah, have, I have think, them pay I for those think things. So too. They pay for it. And then um, even if they're not using me, they can contact the hosting company and get whatever help that they need. Um, yeah. OK, so you've. You launch the site on the host. Um, they take care, you help them with the domain changes to make the site live. Mm -hmm. And then 75 to 80% of your clients will continue on with you after, mm -hmm. as maintenance customers after launch. Yeah, I give um, them a 30 day after launch of free maintenance. That's nice. And so then they, they can choose by the end of the month whether they want to continue. Um, at the ninety nine dollars uh, a month, and that that really covers any issues after launch, 
and like any minor changes that that need to happen. It's not really uh, beyond the scope of the project. This kind of gives a fur and uh, good goodwill with the client that I'm available to them. It's part of the package that I give them. Um, does anybody have any questions about the, this kind of process for the actual site build and launch? So I have some. Does anybody do it differently? That's I think that's a pretty standard way that I've heard. I haven't heard of too many other alternatives. I will I, say, sorry, I, go ahead. I, sorry, I talk with another developer uh, through the Facebook groups and she decided to do a lease your website business model where she does the hosting, she does the design, the build, the maintenance, um, and the client ends up paying like $349 a month for all of it. Um, and there's a commitment of at least 12 months. And at that point, they can either continue on or they can pay it out, like as if you were leasing a car, you can like, just buy it out. Um, and just, you know, so in the website that, you know, if they wanted to leave and get their own hosting and whatnot, you know, they'll zip up all of the, the, the WordPress files and the child theme and all that for them, um, you know, and then they pay out a final amount and then they're gone. Um, but most of the time, what she's seeing is that they're just sticking around to $349 a month. So that's the only other one that I know of that's doing things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Is she doing um, content entry? Because compared to something like Wix or Squarespace, that's, that's much more expensive. Right. No, yeah, she, she has a very specif uh, specific niche that she targets. Mm -hmm. um, she also offers like a big, huge discovery um, strategy session that she charges like two grand for. Um, so she's got her whole different system going on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, but like once she get once she gets in there with them with the strategy session and like they go through very nitty gritty details, um, she can figure out the design, the content. Um, how it's going to look and just build right away. So, you know, and usually at that point, the client is like, they're all on board because they've, they've seen and heard her talk about how she's going to do this for them, you know, and a lot of times that in that industry, they're just more concerned with like, you know, getting, you know, you know, people in their doors. Um, she focuses in on, um, breweries, like mm. the, the mom and pop, the breweries, the, the micro breweries and stuff like that in her area. So, you know, they want to get like bodies in the door ordering beer. <laughs> With that kind of discovery process and um, presumably she's doing the, the design and stuff, it's, they're probably very high quality sites for uh, unique, unique sites for, the, for that uh, amount of money. Yeah, I... I you know, I was just like, I haven't, she hasn't really advertised what brewery she's already launched or whatnot, um, but it's sort of like an ongoing process. Like, you know, every month, part of that money is goes towards like content changes that they might need, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So she's like constantly in front of them saying, you know, okay, what do we need to do this month? And, you know, what other changes are you doing? And stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, speaking of content changes, that ties in with Sonia's question. She just asked um, for Trish. Mm -hmm. um, do you have do you allow time for clients on a monthly basis for content updates and edits? Um, how much time, or do clients do it themselves? Is this part of your maintenance contract? It is part of my maintenance maintenance contract. I for the ninety nine dollar um, rate it. I allow two hours of updates that that it's a use it or lose it. If they don't use the two hours, it does not accumulate to or roll over into the right. next month. Right. 
And I, I find most, I would say most months, my client doesn't even con contact me with, with updates. So they're responsible for creating the content that would update the site. Yeah. I, I do not create new, new content or, or work with them on creating new content or images or what, whatever they, they'll update those themselves. Typically, if they have a blog, they will do the blog themselves. I don't, okay. I don't have any clients that require me to update their blog for them. Um, Does anybody have, do that for somebody? I have clients. I have, it depends on my clients. Most clients, I just do um, WordPress and plugin updates, but I do have some clients who are like, they're almost like my, my pro bono friend clients who, <laughs> um, who I just will do whatever they want and send them a bill for it. And um, they will send me like a word document with, you know, change these words on this page, add this page with these words. And I'll just, and because they just don't have the time to actually learn WordPress. So I will, I will do content updates for them. Um, I actually have two clients like that right now where they'll just send me a, they'll just write it out in Word and send it to me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I do content updates, but I'm writing the content a lot of times too. Mm -hmm. so, Which is um, much more time additional. Like I'll do what I, I say, minor content changes, which is kind of a little, not clearly, clearly defined, but you know, in terms of the time that it takes. Like know, a month. Is it like on the monthly maintenance, like I'll update the plugins and the theme and all that. And then I'll, you know, if they have some tweaks, like you said, like different things, you know, they want to change a few words. And then in terms of posting their blogs, it's usually, I'm usually writing and posting them for them. So mm -hmm. most of my clients don't really know how to use WordPress. They don't really get in there and do it. I, I design it and I use Divi as well. Going back to the plugin licenses, I do it differently than you, Trish, in that um, my clients have to supply their own plugin licenses. So I always have my own copy mm -hmm. of things that I use all the time, like um, Advanced Custom Fields Pro, um, uh, you know, the migration plugins, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. and use my own licenses during development. But for launch, I will send them a list of what they need to buy, which, and I'll put that in the um, estimate up front and it can be it can be like two to five hundred dollars five like a oh, five would be a lot but like around two hundred dollars on a site and let them know they're responsible to maintain those licenses every year and that way if I you know get hit by a meteorite or whatever there it's, it's just like with the hosting and the the domain records it's all in their hands and um, mm -hmm. I just need access to the account it's, it has a little expense for them but it's easier for me and probably just more secure for them. Um, okay, theoretical questions now. What is your biggest challenge in running your business? My biggest challenge, I think, is under, understanding that owning a business means I need to focus more on marketing than on the tech part that I actually own the business and I'm running a business when the tech part is, you know, fun. That's how, <laughs> I think that is the biggest challenge for, for me about doing, doing this and doing it on my own. Yeah, I hate the marketing part. <laughs> tech part is the fun part. What is, what about everybody else? Do you, um, does everyone else, uh, find themselves challenged by doing the marketing of their business? Definitely. I'm in marketing. I mean, that's my background of digital marketing. <laughs> and I find it challenging. It's just, you know, there's just so many things you need to do. You need to do your invoicing and your business and your, your contracts and your, you know, so you're doing your account management and I'm a solopreneur. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, and then to try to do my own social media marketing and to stay up with it, I'm trying to be on all the channels, which is crazy. You know, I don't recommend that ever for my clients, um, but I'm, 
Yeah. So I find it like, especially social media and the blogs and all that, that I write for myself to be, you know, time consuming. And a lot of times I spend the weekends doing that so that I can do client meetings and client work during the week. So yeah, it's challenging. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I have a bigger imposter syndrome problem with creating content and promoting myself than actually doing doing the work even even for myself or for a client it's like i could do it for them doing it for me as a business owner i i i still find that challenging that's that's kind of funny you say that because i think your web, website is really good i think your website is very um clear about what you do it's very specific about what you do and it has like you know, very clear actions to take for someone who's, you know, that might be approaching you and, and not knowing how to go about getting a website. Thanks, Claire. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, my website is like <laughs> the same problem. Just, you know, I've got to think of like three things to say about myself. And I'm going to put them on the website and then it's a portfolio and I'm done. I know. And I've even thought like, hmm, should I hire somebody else to do my website? Has anybody ever thought of that or, or has hired somebody to do their website for them? Not my website, but I'm constantly thinking about farming out the social media. <laughs> but isn't that what you actually do or well, I do, do you for your website? I, I do build websites, I do social media. I help small businesses with like integrated marketing. So I'm writing the blogs, I'm doing the SEO, I'm doing, you know, but there's things I enjoy. Like I'd rather design a website than schedule social media posts, you know? <laughs> Maybe we should organize like a round robin where, you know, I'll do your website and you do someone else's website. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I get to do the fun tech stuff. <laughs> um, I, I like the creativity in that. <laughs> you know, I just finished a, a digital agency website myself and it was a challenge. Um, they had all their content from their old website, um, but it was being converted into Divi and they don't understand how a website is built at all. And it just blew my mind that this was a, like an established digital agency and they don't know how a website is built and yet they're advertising that they can build a website. So I was like, okay. And I got them hooked onto markup. They just love that. <laughs> That's the whole team. Oh, that IO for like making edit changes and stuff like that. And that way they're not blowing up my email with all their changes that they want done. And, um, but yeah, I mean, the site, it was like, it's like over 20 pages and it has video on it. And, SVG logos and because of Divi and how heavy it can be, you know, trying to get it to um, load fast and stuff like that. I loaded, you know, WP Rocket on there and there was like server issues like up the wazoo. Total, I mean, horrible, horrible server issues. <laughs> like it was crashing like three, four times oh. after launch. <laughs> So do you launch. use like a, a paid WP Rocket to make it faster? Because I'm, I'm still having trouble getting the sites to when I do the performance tests and stuff because the yeah. core Web Vitals thing is rolling out now and it'll be yeah. done in August. I mean, the yeah. page performance update. Yeah, you really have to optimize all of your images to the nth degree. And because there's uh, an MP4 video right on the hero of the homepage, that had to be compressed like crazy. It was originally 13 megabytes and I got it down to like just over one. I mean, but it took several iterations to get it to that point. Um, but still, the client's still not happy because do they don't the, understand. But do you use a paid WP Rocket? Because what I'm finding is the images are optimized, but the I'm getting yeah. like excessive JavaScript and um, like when they say like, what's wrong with it, you know? Yeah, no, you WP Rock is a paid plugin. There, I don't think there is a free version. Oh, right. okay, all right, okay. Yeah. So, is there a premium? There's like little tricks. 
There's a little Is there a paid and a premium. Mm hmm. To use the premium. I, I just, I, I always go for like, if there's a lifetime option, I go and go get the lifetime. Gotcha. As mm -hmm. much as I can. So, yeah. but I think they have the yearly only. But so. Yeah, I do, I do WP Rocket too with um, multiple site license so that all of my, my maintenance clients can be on that. I do that also with SEO Press Pro. I've got like an unlimited license. I, I stick with Yoast for SEO. Um, I just bought a Ahrefs. Oh yeah. Do some tracking. I had I had a crisis for the client this week involving SEO and Ahrefs. Um, they had a agency that was not me um, redo their website from Drupal to WordPress, and they took no concern whatever in making sure that the redirects when they moved the content around that any SEO was gonna um, you know connect. And so, you know, it was a giant mess in Ahrefs. Um, Ahrefs, the site, after the site was launched, Ahrefs kept reporting that it was inaccessible by robots.txt and it has like, which it had been before launch, but it was like, it was like Ahrefs, Ahrefs and caching. It was strange. Anyway, it's taken days and days to sort out um, things in Google Search Console. So, you know, don't, don't rearrange your website without making sure you're keeping track of what content and where and setting up redirects. It was a mess. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ahrefs seems like a really great tool. It's, that's how they figured out they yeah, were having it was, problems. It was like the bite the bullet. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's expensive, but hopefully it'll be paid for itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think that's, I think you could say that about a lot of SEO tools that if like, um, Yoast SEO Premium, if you're restructuring your content, I've, it's nice because it sets the redirects automatically. Mm. Um, and it's, it's well worth the, the money. Mm. Um, okay, uh, my next question for Trish is, what are your plans for the future for your business? Well, actually, I have teamed up with my, the marketing strategist that, that I use, and we are, starting a, um, an educational program with a, an in-person retreat where we're doing a beta version next month. Um, we have, well, we did this ourselves last year where we rented an Airbnb, you get away from everything, all the other pressures to actually take time to work on our business to come up with our marketing strategy, what our vision is, to actually work on who our target market is, and then work on the, um, the messaging for, for those segments, what the customer journey is, and um, how, how a website is structured, SEO, how to how to actually um, plan your website. And we found it so valuable that we are bringing it to other people and doing a beta version. Um, and if it is something that you or somebody that you know might be interested in, I've got a, a link on my notification bar and on my website, you can take a look and schedule schedule a uh, 15 minute consult to see if something like that is good for you. That is a fascinating idea. So it is actually have, it's not just lectures, it is actually workshopping um, with, with the experts, with the marketing strategists and with myself, um, which I have really gotten into the marketing theory, I've, I've loved it. Um, find it fascinating and how it re uh, relates to actually creating a website. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
but we are doing that and we're really excited about it. So that that is what is coming next. That sounds really cool. That's really different from sitting at home making websites by yourself. It's it's so sociable and, and interactive. Sociable, interactive, and actually getting feedback from other people, immediate feedback. It's it is fantastic. And um, you come away with basically a a marketing plan that you can implement right away with the the tools that you need that's awesome so well, it is awesome. really awesome thing so um, we are doing a beta next month and hopefully um do if it's successful and we can do another one in the fall super cool i would love to hear how that goes but the website for that is work on your dot business. Let me post it here in the side. Well, we're getting close to eight o'clock. Does anybody have any questions or any other um, uh, anything else to discuss regarding what we've been talking about? I'll just unmute and chit chat at this point. Um, Thanks everyone for coming. I hope you found this useful. I thought uh, it's it's great to hear from someone who's running their own business um, successfully, and all the I love hearing all the processes people have and, and how they manage the little things like licenses and hosting and how you make it easy for yourself when you're juggling all these different plates. It's super useful for me. I know it helps me too, and I I try to have. Um, join groups like this and Facebook groups. Um, one that I know is really active on Facebook is the admin bar. Uh, some of you may be in, in that one and they are very active and our um, agency agency owners like, like ourselves that you can find a lot of good information from them. So that's one, that's one I recommend, highly recommend. Well, um, I'm going to stop recording at this point, but everyone is free to hang out and talk a little longer if they'd like. Stop recording.